Hello, everybody, and thanks for checking out either Liberty Mastermind Podcast or the Uncensored Tactical Podcast. This episode will be produced on both. And if you heard that little ding in the background, that is our live audience at Discord. And if you're listening to this on your podcast platform, it was pre-recorded with a live studio audience, kind of like Full House used to be back in the day. Yay. All right. Today's the episode is on George Washington's Secret Six. It's a book uh, by Brian Kilmeade and Don Yeager. It's about the spy ring that saved the American Revolution. And of course, we're going to talk about all sorts of liberty topics and tactics and and why guns are bad. Guns are, guns are bad? Well, they're bad if, if you're the British. And the gun owners are American. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take a freight train down at the station, and I don't care where we go. Yes, I've seen two seasons of it. Don't don't give Most any spoilers out. I only saw the first seasons. season. I'm not even sure what season they're on now. I'm not even sure. Are they still making it? Let me check real quick. Uh, don't know, but while you while you check, I will tell the audience that I just cracked open my first Yingling American Lager. Oh, it's easily my favorite beer. Only having one though. Cause I'm probably going to the gym soon. I am drinking water because, well, because we haven't bought any alcohol, so we're out. So I think I think it'll make more sense if we start talking about the review of this book from the liberty mindset as a, as opposed to the tactic mindset. Okay. Um, real quick, Go ahead. Uh, turn is on season four. No shit, I got a lot of catching up yeah. to do. I loved it. I'm gonna watch the first season again to get caught up. I think I might have to just go buy those because uh-huh. I, I can't. I can't find them on uh, Netflix or Amazon or whatever else I'm on. And if I just buy them, then I can watch them here and there when I actually have time to watch something. So never. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, okay, okay, sorry. Let's uh, go. Uh, so my big, my biggest, right off the top, I like to give my biggest statement about the book when I'm doing my tactical book club. Holy shit, these things really happen in real life where people have to make the decision, what am I going to do? Am I going to take action? Am I not? Maybe you're forced into action. Maybe you have all sorts of moral or money or family or revenge or all sorts of issues that'll push you into action to risk your fucking life to take up a an insane undertaking against, if you were the American, against the largest, badassest military on the planet. So these things really happen. Like, it's not story time land. Like, this is how we became the country of the U.S., That's just, that's bizarre to me that so many people talk and they say, oh, that'll never happen here. Well, it happened. That's how we started here. What do you mean it'll never happen? Do you think the people in Germany in like 1938 were like, this place, we know what's going to happen here, but we're we're cool with it. We're going to stick around. Or were they like, this is never going to happen here. I think it was the latter. Uh, and you know what? I think we're going to dig into the gun topic a little bit. Yay. So, I have a hard time believing that you can't, I don't think you can be the people that say, we're America, we're number one, whether you're on the liberal, conservative, or whatever side you're on, we're such a great country, and also say, guns are bad. I, it's a, again, with the circular logic, you can't have yes. both. Right. Because if the people in charge are the only ones with the guns, how does that work out for you? You're a slave. Yeah. Can you imagine? Okay, so if you think, if you're in the audience and you're like, we're the greatest country on earth. Okay, so you 
okay, let's assume that that means because we separated from England a couple hundred years ago. Like, so we're good because we did our own thing and we're for liberty and freedom, right? So it's good. Right. What would have happened if they pushed harder for their gun regulations and they were like, listen, only the Redcoats can have guns. You colonists not allowed to have any guns at all. If you own one, we'll throw you in a cage, even if you don't hurt anybody. What in the who's blowing us hell? So I had to pause and unpause to fix a quick tech issue, but I think I was trying to say that you, if the British had much stronger gun regulation laws and the colonists were not allowed to have guns, we would not be this thing that you call a great country. Again, circular logic. We're We're here because we had guns and we beat the shit out of the people that were trying to infringe upon our rights and our liberties. So right. we're talking about the book. George Washington's Secret Six. Um, it's by Brian Kilmeade and Don Yeager. Now, Brian Kilmeade is on a Fox, a couple Fox shows, Fox News. And I don't know anything about Don Yeager. Um, but let's talk about the news here for a second. So... Uh, news, media, school, government, school, media and government working together, government and schools being one and the same. So in the book, they made a quick, a quick like elbow rub against to the statement of George Washington, you know, that since you were in kindergarten, you learned could not tell a lie, right? Have you heard that phrase? Yes. So it says before he was the general of the Continental Army, he was a spy as one of his first military careers. Yes. Both, like, years and years before the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. So a spy, a liar, a professional liar, right? Yes. And one of a couple of the biggest uh, achievements he had in his spy ring that I read throughout the book were uh, setups where they would, they would pretend kidnap someone that works for the British and then they would send him back to the British with a fake story. So the guy that could not tell a lie beat the shit out of the British because he was good at telling lies. So, is that the one and only thing we learned in school ever that's not true? Or does that um, maybe, is that like a red flag that you should be like, huh, maybe other he, things I've learned in life aren't true? So maybe he did chop down the cherry tree? I don't know what the fuck that thing's all about, but I hear all <laughs> sorts of people talk about that. Um, I liked that a lot in the book. So there's not really any spoilers in here. It's a documentary style book. It's not like, I'm not giving you the mystery. The Look, the Patriots win at the end, okay? That's the big spoiler. Yes. Um, I do like, I like, I love the geeky code-breaking stuff. So they talk yeah, about uh, the hidden ink. They talk about how they chose uh, selection sites and how, how many people they included and how they first approached people. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> so I like that part about it. So for the tactics side of it... Um, I guess liberty and tactics. So let's say, like, come to pretend land with me for a second. Like, Donald Trump is like, we're going to war against the Americans. Like, I don't know, pick a fucking, pick a reason, right? So we go to a civil war in this country. Like, it comes to your doorstep. You don't have a choice. And someone says, hey, if you don't support our side, we're going to murder you and your family. And you go, great, I support your side. But you really support the other side that believes in freedom and not killing you for a dumb reason. How do you, like, what do you do? Do you get them some messages? How do you do it? Do you use disappearing ink? Do you use Twitter? Do you chat over uh, internet game chat? Because it's, even though, you know, uh, I heard the guys in uh, 13 hours. Did you hear about that? Yeah. Uh, I heard some references that they were passing messages to each other through the game or something like that. Or that have you heard anything? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Al Qaeda was doing that for quite yeah, a while. Yeah, I heard they were doing apparently. it too. I also heard they were doing. They would draft up emails and not send them, and both yeah. pe people on different sides of the planet would just access the account and just read the drafts. I thought that was interesting. Yep. yep. Still, I'm sure, still track a bull, but probably less likely to be tracked. I don't know. Anyways, I thought it was super cool. Um, like I said, it showed you things that you thought were true your whole life that maybe not weren't true. But let me bring it full circle real quick, talking about Brian Kilmeade. He's an anchor on a couple Fox News Channel shows. So wouldn't be the first person in the mainstream media that painted a picture based on a bias or coercion or an interest or a, you know, 
not a complete legitimate story. So could he wanted to have painted a certain picture in this book? Yeah, sure. Yes. Am I, am I super concerned about it? No, because I, I gleaned enough information out, uh, out of it that I ran through my own mental filter that I, my intent was to learn a couple things that, that challenge what I believe to be true, which I did, uh, to keep an open mind, which I did, to learn about a couple of spy tactic things that happened during the Revolutionary War. Learned some of that stuff. That was pretty cool. I love that stuff. Um, I learned that the French were largely instrumental in us winning that war, which a lot of people, like I remember I was in high school and we were like, freedom fries, freedom kissing, boycott yeah. the French. Because <laughs> they're a bunch of surrender monkeys and they, they lost every war they fought. It's funny that no one brought up the fact that, well, we wouldn't be America without them. Yep. So really easy to believe things that people say. It's really easy to read the headlines of the news article. It's really easy to get your news from just one source. Not always the full painted picture, though. So I'm really happy that I read this book. I'm going to have to check it out. And it talks about some of the, um, some of the couriers getting stopped. And mm -hmm. like... I got a little excited. I was like, okay, so I have something I'm not supposed to have. Someone's like, I played it like in today's day and age. Like if I were a spy for the, I don't know what, whatever side of this new civil war is. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like today's day and age. And I'm like, all right, I got a couple of fucking rifles in the trunk of my car and I'm driving to a enemy held territory pretending to be on their side. And they stopped me at a roadblock and they're like, Hey, yeah, we just have to search your, search your car real quick what the fuck am I going to do? <laughs> like that is like being a courier with a written message on a piece of parchment paper with a wax seal and like running it from one state to one colony to another back then. God, that hat. Could you imagine how nerve wracking that would be? Like, yeah. You're riding your little horse up to a checkpoint and you're like, Oh shit. But at the same time, like fences weren't that big of a thing either. So, you know, you could go around places. You know what I mean? I, I, maybe. I don't think those people, I don't think people in the 1700s were fucking idiots. I mean, I'm sure that a lot of them knew, like, I could take a boat at night or I can take a boat during the day. I can take yeah, this I mean, trail you know, or I can go around. But still, it happened. Yeah, people get I wouldn't be, well, you know, if I was carrying large supplies of, say, gunpowder, then I would probably have to stay on a wagon on a road. So, yeah. I don't, I don't, look, I know it's going to suck. I don't want any big war to happen in this country, but you know what? I also don't think it's likely, but not for the same reason for the America crowd. Like, I think that the government knows that that's bad for them because they lose either way. I think that there are so many more, like, if as long as people have their iPhones and their internet connections, they're happy. Yep. So I'm not too worried about Facebook and football. Yeah. Not too worried about a civil war breaking out. I mean, we got to feed our kids. We got, I got to put food on the table. So do you want to risk that to go fight a war? No. No, no one wants to do that. But they want to keep us as close to that, as divided mm -hmm. on that line as possible. And there were some ladies involved in this, in this spy ring as well, which I thought was super cool. Yeah. Um, there's a couple. There's a couple things in the book I disagreed with. Let me flip to one of the pages I just saved. Um, let's see. All right, I like this one. So this is talking about Benedict Arnold. So Washington. This is on page 130 of my book. This says Washington appointed Arnold the military commander of Philadelphia. Uh, excuse me. I'm so embarrassed. Uh, Arnold quickly realized that this new position would allow him to engage in a variety of business deals to restore his finances, which were still plagued by his numerous debts back home in New Haven. He was not particularly popular among many citizens of Philadelphia, however, and complaints were soon raised that not all of his ventures were legitimate. One vocal critic was Alan McLean, a highly respected and distinguished soldier from Delaware who had been among the first Americans to enter Philadelphia when the British left. McLean voiced his concerns to General Washington, but was reprimanded for challenging such a high-ranking officer. Imagine that. I almost feel like I've said things similar to that on the Uncensored Tactical Podcast. Like, maybe... Hey. I know, it's You're shocking. Rank. It's shocking, yeah. I know. 
your rank, a shiny badge or a rank on your shoulder does not automatically make you a hero. It doesn't give you better morals or values than me. That's right. And a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times, I think it gives you the opposite. Just because it's so easy. It makes it so much easier. Yep. If you, if you're a low-ranking dude and you spout off at the mouth and you're like, I'm going to go do this thing that's illegal. Ha. Huh. How easy is it for someone else to, to squash that immediately? Easy. If you're a high-ranking yep. dude and you go, oh, I'm going to go do this stupid illegal thing. Who exactly? It's got to be someone higher than you that blows the whistle. Yep. Because someone lower than you, they blow the whistle and you stomp on them. So I don't think I'm wrong. No, not at all. And anyone with a brain, I think they know I'm I'm not talking about everybody. I'm not saying it's a it's a fact across the board. I'm just saying it it's easier to suck at your job or to do something immoral or to get away with bullshit or to be lazy or or not pull your weight. It's easier when you're higher ranking. There are more perks and less responsibility the farther up you go in any bureaucracy. Oh yeah. That's that's part of the tactical podcast there. This is and again this this is going to be published on both, so there is no episode number. It'll just be on the title of whichever whichever website hosts it. I think we're in the thirties at LMP and in the teens in uncensored tech. Um yeah, I think so. Uh, and who else? Uh, I wanted to throw this in today's episode at some point too. Uh, Whiskey and Rebellion on Instagram. Yeah. So he has really a couple. A couple of his memes have said things like, uh, "The people that are like I support the thin blue line." He's like, "We're also the people in 1776 that were like I support the redcoats." Yeah, it was only like three percent. Uh, yeah, that's, that that's actually the three percenter movement, right? That's what they're about. Yeah, yeah. That's um, that's not much. And then they say things like, uh, like they're marching into one territory or another territory, and the people, like, look at them with the like the sorry, the patriots will march into one the rebels, if you will, march into one territory, and the people look at them with disdain. And I'm like. Now it's easy to look back and say, well, those guys were wrong. But if the Patriots would have lost the war, you look back and you say, well, those guys were right. So it just shines another light on the the sheeple being so fucking asleep at the wheel that, okay, uh, it, it appeared that after the war for the first, I don't know, decade or two, people were super fucking happy that they weren't getting taxed out the asshole which I think they were clear about, like, we're going to fight this war because we're not happy with the way we're being treated. And I understand, you know, that's the same, it's the same thing that people do today in the military and in law enforcement and in other walks of life. Got to put food on the table. Can't, don't want to take up that fight and risk that paycheck. I'm pretty sure that was probably what they were doing back in 1776 too. Right after the war, didn't Washington implement the whiskey tax? The whiskey rebellion, yeah. Yeah, there was, oh, yeah, there was lots of um, uh, hypocrisy afterwards, if I remember reading correctly. I think they there was a couple gun cases that happened within the first decade. Yeah. Um, and they said, well, we, as a town, we can say you can't bear arms. So, you, you know, not outside the city limits, you can have your arms. Um, I, I don't have a fact on that one, but I've. I've done a little bit of research into that. It's worth looking into some more later, but maybe for a Liberty Channel show. And how many years later are we still dealing with that same bullshit? Mm-hmm. It's it's circular logic, man. I, I I'm trying not to get stuck in that rabbit hole tonight, but yeah, it, this is the it, the logic is so wrong, <laughs> so wrong. So uh, I do recommend the book on. on Uncensored Tactical for my Tactical Book Club. I usually, I usually either do like a highly recommended and one way or the other, or like a highly not recommended. This one's this is highly recommended. I would put it in the yes list. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. Uh, and if you like that show, Turn, I think I saw it on Netflix um, or wherever you watch it. Like it's it's hand in hand. Like they're they're really similar, at least for the first season of Turn that I saw. So all the names are still in it, and. One of the, th- 
I get it in this book. One of the things I don't like is when there's way too much erroneous backstory in a book. Yeah. You know, not to, I don't want to spoil anything, but season two kind of seemed like they were getting more into the erroneous backstory and less into the, the cool shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I didn't know. I wanted to research it further to find out if I could, you know, find anything on the backstory and, and see how, how real they were keeping it or if they just do what they normally do and fuck up a good series. But I don't know. Well, this one does have backstory. That's for sure. Excellent. Oh, fuck. I was going to say something else. What was it? Shit, I don't know. I'll remember it five minutes from now. Um, <laughs> the show was great. The French, the rank. Uh, if you um, if you enjoy um, cryptography and stuff like that, oh, I do. Uh, uh, the National Spy Museum puts on a podcast, and I can't remember the name of the podcast. It might just be the National Spy Museum or something like that. Uh, or maybe it's SpyCast. Anyways, they interview people who write books, and they interview former spies, and they interview all sorts of cool stuff. It's um, sometimes it's pretty dry. Um, sometimes it's fucking amazing. I will add that to the list. Um, Oscar Del Tequilo, I believe, is called SpyCast. And the links for this book. Uh, as well as a link to join our Discord channel. Download the Discord app and get on the channel. Uh, those will both be in today's original article. It'll be on uncensoredtactical.com, and it will be on libertymastermindpodcast.com. And I believe, uh, I know Uncensored Tactical, the Contact Us page, should have a Discord link on it. Okay. If it's not on Liberty Mastermind Podcast yet, I'll put it on that contact page as well. Cool. So it'll be one click. If you go to the website, go to contact, and then click the Discord link so you can yeah. interact with us live while we record. And when we're not recording, because one of the four of us, mostly all of us, are on here all hours of the day and night. Mm-hmm. And it's a really good environment. We got really good people checking in daily, providing value to other members, and we're having meetups in different states and supporting each other and. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Yeah, me too. Uh, Anything else, Jack? This might not be a super long episode today. No, I think I'm good. Uh, If you want some other Tactical Book Club recommendations, go to uncensoredtactical.com, and you can see all of the Tactical Book Club editions we've done. If you have a recommendation, just shoot me an email at uncensoredtactical at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up on Instagram or get on the Discord channel, and we already have some some subcategories on there for show topic ideas. So Yeah. Oh, if also, if there's another cryptography podcast out there, mm-hmm. it would be cool if um you introduced us to that the, the audience, you know, if they introduced us to, to anything that like that. Um yeah, they did talk about the invisible ink quite a bit in the middle section of the book here Um, talked about folding paper a certain way. So that's like, that's stuff I really like. Um, I said backstory a couple minutes ago, some of the books that I read, especially the ones about like the intelligence agencies that are written by people or ghost written for people that are high ranking officers in different agencies. The title of the book will be Something like, what's on my bookshelf now? Lessons from a life in the CIA's clandestine service. And then the first whole chapter is, my grandma was this. My grandpa was this. They came here from that. I don't fucking care. I don't care. I don't care whatsoever. I want lessons learned from a service in the CIA. I don't want your backstory and your parents' backstory and their parents' backstory. And when you were a kid which little peewee football team you played on and what your favorite position was, I don't care. Yeah. If you're going to do that at some point, maybe like the second chapter or maybe like later in the book or maybe in the about the author tab on the back of the book, that'd be great. 
But this book, it jumps right into it. I was excited for almost the whole book. There are a few paragraphs that go into detail. I'm going to be honest, when I saw the part that said, he had 18 kids, kid number one was this, kid number two was this, I just skipped forward a few paragraphs. Yeah. Um, Oscar Delta Kilo wants to know if we have read Through Our Enemy's Eyes. I have not. I have not, but I like that concept. I have a. I was on a, a Jack Spirico's podcast talking about that. Awesome. I was sitting out on my boat in Guantanamo Bay, and we were doing water security. And I asked some of the guys, hey, if, uh, let's say like a third-party country, like uh, Saudi Arabia, you know, sent a couple people to, or what was No, I said if, if a couple Canadians flew over to Saudi Arabia and bombed their churches, like like 10 or 11 Canadians just flew over there and bombed Saudi Arabia. And then Saudi Arabia came to the U.S. to wage war against us because of that. Like, you'd already be like, what the fuck, right? And my buddies were like, yeah, I'd be really confused and that'd be bullshit. And I'm like, yeah. And if, like, they killed, like, half of your family, you'd probably want to take up arms against the invading Saudis, right? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, and if they captured you and brought you to a, th- a third or fourth party host nation and put you in prison without a trial for 10 years, that would be pretty wrongful, wouldn't it? And they're like, yeah. And I pointed over to the to the part of the base that had the prisons in it, and I was like, what do you think those guys are thinking in there? And my buddy's like, it was like a seesaw, like they were teetering, like they didn't, they, they were going to go through that phase of, oh my God, do I want my eyes to be open? Or they were like, or do I just not want to believe it? I don't want to look, I don't want to look. So... I love thinking about that through our enemy's eyes stuff, especially with this Iraq war, Afghanistan war, war on terror, Syria, Libya. And uh, I've had some, I've met some people yesterday that said, Hey, thanks for your service. And I'm like, yeah, I wish I did more to help. And they're like, no, but you, you know, you went. And I'm like, I'm like guys, our U S military in the last hundred years hasn't done anything to protect this country. And then it just went down a bad road from there. <laughs> operation Just Cause. You remember that one? Yes. That's a pretty cool name for an operation, right? Just Cause. Not just like Justice Cause. Like just eh, just Cause, yeah, you know? Just Cause. I think, I think that one was Grenada, right? The U.S. invaded Grenada uh, to protect the U.S. <laughs> uh, Niger, Mali, Kenya, Tanzania. Yeah, just cause, just cause. Um, that's pretty much it. I I like the book and I like this format doing a little podcast episode because that way we can get our con. That's that's where I like a majority of our content to be besides the lock picking videos and stuff like that. So I'm I'm okay. pretty happy wrapping it up. Yeah, that sounds good to me. So thanks for joining me, Jack. Yes, sir. And uh, the best ways to support us is to get on the Discord channel. Links will be on both websites, LibertyMasterMindPodcast.com and UncensoredTactical.com or liking and subscribing on your podcast platform of choice and sharing this with your friends that you think might find some value in this content. That is a great way to support us. And I am the most active on Instagram and on Discord. I've really been active on Discord and not so much the other platforms just because of time. Um, I need to get back onto Instagram a lot and yeah. Okay. And then of course you can always send emails to both websites and you can give us questions, comments, concerns, or if you want to hear a specific topic, or if you want to be a guest on either platform, shoot us a contact email and tell us what you want to talk about. There's a really high percentage chance we'll take you. Even if, even if we disagree with you, I'd be happy to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, or you could uh, join our Discord server and private message us. That All right, folks. Too. Thanks for stopping by. Yep. See you.